and the rumbling through the land. Good morning and welcome to Crossroads with George Cabot. It's a dull, grey, cold winter morning. Hi, Jamie. Lovely to see you. Praise God. We have a loving Savior and a loving Lord. Praise God. He is a loving Savior. Get on board. It's a wonderful morning and I pray that the Lord will speak to you and to me. He will meet you and encourage you and bless you. The Paris chief and all can go. Praise God. The rich and poor of them. No second class aboard this train. No difference in the fare. Get on board, Milton. Get on board, Milton. Get on board, Milton. Yes, there's room for many a more. We'll shout over all our sorrows and sing forevermore with Christ and all his army on that celestial shore. Get on board, the chillin', get on board, the chillin', get on board, the chillin'. There's room for many a more. Get on board, little chillin', get on board, little chillin', get on board, little chillin'. There's room for many a more. Praise God. We have a loving Lord and a loving Savior who promises us that he is with us and will not pass us by. This morning we are continuing with the theme of looking at some of those great biblical verses in scriptures about the advent, the coming of the Lord and the second coming of the Lord. And the second coming of the Lord is often associated with the day of the Lord or the day of judgment or the day of wrath. And so uh, we have to hold these different themes together in our Christian life. The first coming, a day of hope, a day of redemption. The second coming, the day of judgment, but also the day of victory, of truth over evil, good over evil. God reigns. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord reigns. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this new day. We thank you that you love us and you care for us. May your presence and peace abide with us. Speak to us, dear Lord. Encourage us with your presence. May your Holy Spirit comfort us, equip us, and use us for your glory. And this morning, Lord, I pray that you would keep us very close to you. Guide and direct our steps, we pray. Lead us in the paths of righteousness. And now, Lord, we are so grateful to you for the many blessings that we receive from your hand. Guide and direct our paths, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray the collect for purity. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good to see you, Henry. Thank you for joining us this morning at Crossroads. We're going to look at Malachi chapter 3. 
Malachi chapter 3, and we're going to look at verse 1 to verse 6. Malachi chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 6. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 6. Thus said the Lord, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord God Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purify of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord as in days gone by, as in former years. So I will come to put you on trial. I will be quick to testify against sorcerers, adulterers, and perjurers, against those who defraud laborers of their wages, who oppress the widows and the fatherless, and deprive the foreigners amongst you of justice. But do not fear me, says the Lord Almighty. Praise the Lord. So in our reading from Malachi this morning, hi Sarah and Todd, we are coming against one of those ancient prophecies concerning the Messiah. God is telling us that he will send someone who will prepare the way for the Lord. And we can see it being fulfilled through the ministry of John the Baptist, the baptizer, the one who pointed to Jesus and said, prepare the way of the Lord. I'm a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. What a remarkable ministry John the Baptist had. And then the word of the Lord says, you will find and discover the Lord has come to his holy temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord. I am. And so this morning, I want to encourage you that God's word will always be fulfilled. When God intends something and he speaks it, his word bears fruit and comes back with fruits in them. God's words are never void. Praise the Lord. God's words are never void. They never come back empty. And so when the Lord has said, it will be done. God promised us his Son will come and the Son came. Now he is talking about the return of the glorious Son. Let's look at verse 2 of Malachi chapter 3, verse 2. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. You know, he's saying, I'm glad that you are prepared and waiting for the day of the Lord, but do you really understand what is going to happen? Jemasiki, Asha. And so, what is he saying to you and to me? He's saying, look, the day of the Lord is like no other day. It's going to be a terrifying day. It's going to be a glorious day. It's going to be a wonderful day, but it's going to be an awful day for those who violated God's word. Who can endure the day of his coming? Two things. How many of you are going to be patient 
and trust in the Lord till his return. How many of you can endure the challenges of waiting for the Lord's return? We are called to be vigilant. We are called to be alert. We are called to persevere and to trust in the Lord. And then he says, who can stand when he appears? Who can stand when he appears? In other words, his appearance is going to be so awesome, so incredible, so glorious, so terrifying. Do you really think you can stand in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Do you really think you can stand in the presence of the governor of the universe, the supreme master of the universe? Think carefully. Order your lives. Trust in the Lord. You know why? Because he will judge. He will evaluate. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness and the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord as in days gone by, as in former days. You know, when the Lord comes, he's not only going to test, but he's going to refine. He's going to purify. If any of you understand what refining and purification means, it means just that. All the dross, all the impurities will be taken away. And that is a process and it's a painful process. Are you ready to be refined? Are you ready to be purified by the living God? It's necessary. It's important. But you need to know that it will be exacting. The Lord will purify. Just like a goldsmith or a silversmith puts the metal into the fire. And it has to melt. It has to be purified in the same way each of us will have to be purified. Because God is holy. And to be in the presence of the holy God, each of us will have to be refined on the day of judgment. And so it's important for us to order our lives today, examine our lives today, and to live in the knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Not in terms of a phobia, but knowing that we will be accountable, we will be judged, and therefore we must be humble and we must live out our Christian lives with the knowledge that each of us will have to give an account of our lives before the Lord. Sins that were hidden in the past will be brought out. But you and I will trust the Lord to say, He is mine. He is mine. She is mine. She is mine. I have paid the price for all their sins. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us is what we should be crying out to the Lord. Then the Lord will have people bring offerings in righteousness. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord as in the days gone by. You know, the thank offerings will be brought before the Lord. 
and the Lord will accept our offerings. What a wonderful thing to know that we will be accepted by the Lord and that he will not reject us, but he will accept us. He will receive us. Praise the Lord to know that the Lord will receive each and every one of us. During this Christmas season, there will be much festivity. There will be much celebrations. But let's do it in the knowledge of the return of the King. We celebrate his arrival and we look forward to his return. We recognize his return will be glorious, will be amazing. And we recognize that the Lord will return as the King. He will reign. He will rule. He will restore the balance. He will renew creation and he will as part of the renewing experience, judge the world and purify each and every one of us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, he says he will receive us and accept our offerings. But verse 5 and 6 are very important in this process. So I will come to put you on trial. I will be quick to testify against sorcerers, adulterers, and perjurers, against those who defraud laborers of their wages, who oppress the widows and the fathers, and deprive the foreigners amongst you of justice. And do not fear me, says the Lord Almighty. What is he saying? He says, when I come back, I will hold accountable all those who have violated my commands. I will come down hard on those who worship other gods, who trust in spirit mediums, who will put their faith in sorcery, magic, black arts, such people will not be spared, says the Lord God Almighty. He speaks of adulterers, people who broke the covenant, people who are unfaithful in relationship. He will hold all such people accountable. Perjurers, liars, people who conceal the truth and act deceitfully against those who defraud laborers. Don't give them their right wages. Who oppress the widows and the fatherless. Oppressing the underprivileged, oppressing the weak is something that the Lord will not tolerate. But then here's another one for those of us who live in a world that are suspicious of foreigners and deprive the foreigners amongst you of justice. The Lord stands by refugees, immigrants, foreigners. He says they have rights and I will stand with them and for them. And I will be particularly hard on those who do not fear me, says the Lord God Almighty. You know, my brothers and sisters, the return of the King is going to be a glorious but dreadful day for those who will experience his judgment. Lord, have mercy on me, is our prayer. Forgive us, help us to live a righteous life. 
help us to live in the light of your knowledge, in the light of your wisdom. Spare us, O Lord. Purify us, cleanse us, that we might live a life that is holy and pleasing in your sight. You know, my brothers and sisters, we have a wonderful Lord who is going to come. We look forward to that. We look forward to the return of the King. Hi, Simon. And we are praying that he will not pass us by. As we prepare in this season of Advent, this season of joy, we remember that the Lord, when he returns, it will be a glorious day. It will be a wonderful day where truth will reign. But we also recognize the terrifying day that it will be for the wicked. Protect us, Lord. Preserve us, Lord. And keep us close to you. I'm going to sing that wonderful song, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Saviour. Pass me not, O gentle Saviour, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Saviour, Saviour, hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling do not pass me by let me at thy throne of mercy find a sweet relief kneeling there in deep country Help my unbelief Saviour, Saviour Hear my humble cry While on others thou art calling Do not pass me by Trusting only in thy merit, would I seek thy faith? Heal my wounded, broken spirit, save me by thy grace. Saviour, Saviour, hear my humble. of all my comfort more than life to me whom am I on earth beside thee whom in heaven but thee Saviour Saviour hear my humble Yes, Lord, do not pass us by. Keep us close to you, Lord Jesus, and help us to live as you want us to live. Show mercy upon us, O Lord. Forgive us, O Lord. And come quickly, Lord, that we might live in your glorious truth, 
that we may live in your grace and mercy. Precious Lord, show mercy upon us. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Keep me close to thee. As we come together in the name of the Lord, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, both now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning at Crossroads. I pray that the Word of God would encourage, comfort, and strengthen you, keep you close to His self, live in a right relationship with the Lord Jesus, and you will flourish, said the Lord. And so this morning, I pray that the Lord will bless and encourage each and every one of you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. Come again tomorrow. In the meanwhile, be blessed, stay blessed, and become a blessing to someone you know today. Bye-bye.